Dohosa, Fallen Star, 2012. We followed Doho's work for a while before inviting him to the campus in 2006. He's thought long and hard about the idea of home. When he first came to this country to go to graduate school, uh, he came from Seoul, Korea, and came to go to RISD, the Rhode Island School of Design in Providence, he felt completely displaced and disoriented, like he'd been dropped from the sky uh, into a whole new world. He's thought about how a house becomes a part of you. Your home is a part of you. He wanted to make this a physical house that had come from afar. People have compared it to the Wizard of Oz and the tornado picking up the house and sending it up into the air. This, more than any other piece in the Stewart Collection, involved a collaboration of different people, different disciplines. It was experimental on the one hand, like every piece in the Stewart Collection, but it was the most complicated, the most complex from a, a standpoint of construction and design. The cottage was built down on Warren Mall, on the plaza, where everybody could see it over a period of months. Uh, this construction that was happening in the middle of the plaza uh, slowly becoming a house. And then one day, and this was one of the big events of the year, people came running from all directions to watch the hoisting of this house to the top of the building. The construction workers, the company that orchestrated the whole thing, Pacific Southwest Structures, were truly uh, heroes in making this completely unique thing come off without a hitch. This artwork does something and exists on different levels in a way that I have never seen and that I think is unique among all works of art in public spaces because it is on the one hand so very, very public, way up on top of this building, visible from miles around. It has this abrupt and amazing look from down below. And then as you get closer to it and go upstairs and go into the garden and go into the piece itself, it acquires this really, really personal dimension. The house is very familiar once you're in. Um, it is familiar, but it is not familiar feeling. You have to adjust just as Doho did when he came here. You have to adjust both mentally and physically, in the case of this house, to your new surroundings. Of course, we had to furnish the house, and it had to have wallpaper. The wallpaper guy was luckily a perfectionist. It's on a tilt, so it would. It was very hard. There's not a plumb line in the whole house. There are comfortable couches and chairs. Everything scaled down. We found smallish things in thrift shops and around. Some of it is genuine antique and some of it is not. But it's a mix, like all homes, of various sort of household items, including uh, family photographs, including a television which works, including uh, steam, which appears to be smoke coming out of the chimney. Uh, there are clocks that have the, the correct time. There are lights that come on at night. Um, it does appear that somebody is living there. And the garden is intimate. It's scaled down. The bricks of the pathway are scaled down. The furniture, the Adirondack chairs in the garden are scaled down. All of the plants are selected uh, because they have uh, smaller leaves and because they can be uh, seen as uh, slightly miniaturized. The house itself is about 75 or 80 percent of full size. So it feels like a full-size house, but it feels like a very, very small house. The door jam, for instance, is somewhat lower than a normal door jam. A tall person has to duck when they step inside. Nothing in the house is straight except for one thing, the chandelier that hangs straight down from the ceiling, which looks for all the world like an incredibly crooked, magically sort of a crooked chandelier. We're very excited about this project and to have it open. There were many who said it couldn't be done. How could you possibly do this? But with persistence and the collaboration and cooperation of this whole team, we made it happen. And we think it's an unforgettable one that will be in many people's minds for generations to come.